All right, uh, hello again, folks. Uh, it's Nate. I just want to give a quick update on my uh, project making use of the ESP32 Lyra uh, T audio board and um, old school cassette decks. In order to simulate the digital audio playback uh, from one of these uh, decks and tapes. Um, so, uh, quick summary of what the project involved. It's essentially you uh, encode uh, data on the cassettes and uh, you stick into a regular cassette deck and then um, this data is decoded and it plays back the audio file out of FLAC or MP3 which is stored on the Lyra T board. Um, surprisingly, this worked out a lot better than I thought it would when I initially started this project. Even with the limited resources on, on this board, and as a reminder, this has a 240 megahertz dual core uh, processor um, versus desktop processors, which are usually in the gigahertz range, and uh, very limited RAM. But it, we, you know, we got it to work. And um, so instead of telling you guys, let me just uh, give you guys a quick sample of uh, how all this works worked out so you could hear the clean digital audio uh, which is controlled by the data on this uh, on the audio cassette so if I were to uh, stop it stops uh, play plays fast, fast forward I'll go to another section of the sound so the whole process is almost uh, seamless. Um, you know, there's a slight delay when you stop, but other than that, it uh, you know, it, if this board is hidden somewhere in the back, it will you'll be hard to tell what uh, which is actually, what's actually. How does all, all this works? Well, essentially, the data that goes on the audio cassette, uh, c you know, contains um, uh, the ID of the FLAC or MP3 file, uh, tape ID or tape ID essentially like a playlist ID, and a timestamp which indicates at what point of the of the what point the, should the MP3 be started playing. So when you press play on the tape deck, uh, this data is read in about four. You know, I get four records per second uh, for redundancy, and the board interpreter says, "Hey, play this." mp3 or flag file with this ID at this time and after that uh, we just keep track to make sure the time time codes on the uh, cassette doesn't um, stray too far away from the actual time code of the plain um, audio file and uh, that uh, worked uh, that, that, that has worked uh, quite smoothly and what makes all this possible is a program called Minimodum and Minimodum is, is effectively lets you uh, encode uh, text data or you could do binary data on it, onto a cassette. Technology is not new. Uh, this, uh, this is what was used during the early 80s when the computers used cassettes for storage. So it, um, you know, we were, I was just fortunate in that it, uh, you know, there's a, that mini modem program was still being maintained and developed. So how easy was yeah. this project to implement on this um, uh, Lyra T board? Um, not very easy. Fortunately, I partnered with a uh, developer, embedded developer I worked with before and uh, for, quite talented. And um, he was able to work through a lot of issues uh, we, we encountered on, on this board. And the biggest challenge was just um, getting the mini modem program, which is designed for uh, desktop computers to run on uh, the ESP32, and uh, at, at a point I thought we couldn't do it, but he, you know, he managed to kind of squeeze it in there, and it worked uh, rather well. And um, because uh, even when it's decoding and doing all this uh, decoding and playing back the, uh, the audio, it's still only using about half the processing power of the board. So there's Half of it's still available, which is uh, which is um, remarkable. As far as uh, where this project is going and what the next steps are, I I kind of think we 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 hit a road. Uh, you know, we kind of hit the end of the road with this because uh, the ch the problem is this is a twenty something dollar board, and the audio components in there, the DAC, the ADC, are obviously not the best components. So it it kind of really holds hold things back at this point and. Um, 
if uh, you know this is a hobby project but if I were, had to continue this forward I would definitely go with a uh, probably a Raspberry Pi is, uh, to do it I mean I actually run all the code uh, on the Raspberry um, Pi anyway and uh, it uh, certainly Raspberry Pi certainly has a lot more horsepower than this and you could do more fancy uh, digital signal processing and this implement uh, uh, more uh, you know more cr more interesting uh, things I suspect but for what this board is and the, the price point and, and the, the goals of the project it uh, certainly uh, worked out um, on worked a microcontroller well. now that being said uh, the programming API for this is, is certainly nowhere as easy as it as it would be implementing uh, something on a Raspberry Pi or even uh, an Arduino. The the framework we use we use this from uh, it's called a ESP uh, ADF Audio Development Framework, and um, there are uh, quite a few examples, but none of the examples actually showed them working together. So you get an example that shows you how to play the MP3, or you get an example show you how to you know, uh, play through Bluetooth, or you know m uh, use the equalizer settings on there. But uh, when you have to, you know, this project combine all of those and it, it's, you know, kind of had to do a lot of uh, figuring out things on our own and a lot of trial and error. Uh, you know, whereas if this was a Raspberry Pi, a lot of issues would have been um, uh, fixed or someone would have uh, ran into them before and, you know, you would have just been able to use their knowledge. Uh, that wasn't the case. But again, um, it works and I'm hoping they actually release a updated uh, updated version to this uh, maybe for a little bit better uh, audio components and uh, maybe uh, like a LCD screen so we could actually um, see easily see what tracks are played on this and as far as seeing what tracks um, because this has a Wi-Fi you know we run in the essentially a uh, mini web server that lets us view all the track information and that's coming from the, the tape. And the same thing also works on connect my phone to it, the board as well. So really interesting board and uh, yeah, definitely for all the applications, yeah, worth a look at.